What is up, everybody? I am Daniel. I am Josiah. And today we're wasting our talent with... Exactly. Exactly. The one and only. So you're a hip-hop artist, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So how'd you get... You say you're from Martinsburg. Yes, sir. And how'd you get into hip-hop? <clears throat> uh, I don't know, man. I just come from a differently cultural background. Like, my father, my, old, my stepfather is uh, black and everything. So, you know, I'm growing up in that. I learned, I listened to go-go, soul music, all that early. And I just caught on to it, like, quickly. And it was just something, like, I played sports in high school. And then I got hurt. I hurt both of my shoulders. Mm. And, uh... Mm-hmm. I don't know, it just turned into, I started writing music one day. I spit a verse on like one of the computer mics, you know, the little thin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah done yeah, that like, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spit a verse on that, man. And then like, I was like, I love this. It was just an adrenaline rush. It felt real dope mm-hmm. and real authentic. And I was like, this is what I'm trying to pursue. And this is what I'm trying to go after. And it's been on that since since then. Yeah. How long have you been? Uh... Uh, I've been writing and making music in general since I was like 16-ish. Mm-hmm. I'm 26 now, so 10, 10 years. years. Yeah, but I've only been starting to like put money into it and like really understand the concept of the business side and all that bullshit for like the past like two or three. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm still considering myself like real, real fresh and raw into the contents of everything because, you know, music is only like 10% of the actual business itself. Oh, yeah. So you feel me? Like I'm trying to still learn like, all the business side, learn the ins and the outs, and then you find out there's a lot of scams and everything with it. So it's a process, mm-hmm. man, and it takes time. So mm-hmm. nothing worth living for it takes happens overnight. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so you said uh, obviously you you brought us a picture um, of Patrick Hall, yeah, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, how'd you get in contact with him? Have you known him for a long time? Or no, I've no, I uh, actually got in contact with Pat through Gandhi. Okay, yeah, because uh. Gandhi, I don't, I haven't known Gandhi a long time either. Um, I live in Cumberland now. I mean, like I said, I'm originally from Marsbury, but obviously he's from Cumberland originally. Mm-hmm. So he was a big artist out there. I found out about his music and I followed him on Twitter. And then I saw how they had like shows and stuff organizing in Morgantown. And I hit Pat up one day and I was like, hey man, I'm trying to get a part of the shows. Like, what do I got to do? Blase, blase. And then uh, we just exchanged info. I got his contact. I came to the studio and I fell in love with the sound. Cause he was actually an engineer that like helped me raise my sound and my quality and everything. So we just been working since there. I met him last year. Last year. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. And I, I it, it, it's it's dope and not because I live an hour and a half away, so I don't get to be in there every day like I want to be. Mm-hmm. Like music is my passion, man. Like obviously I have a nine to five. I have kids, so I got a family to raise, all that good stuff. But music is where I, my heart is. So if I could, I'd be in the studio. Yeah. Pounding it out every damn day, you know. Mm-hmm. But it. It is what it is. I'm getting there. Yeah. The goal, the end goal right mm-hmm. now is to get make music my nine to five. Mm-hmm. That way I can really pursue it and chase after it and make it feasible instead mm-hmm. of just like a distant thing that can possibly happen. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's it's all coming together though, man. It's real dope. Good. So do you um with your family, your kids, your job, do you uh, have like a little recording space at your house that you uh, can kind of track stuff out, kinda get feel for get a feel for what you're doing? Nah, I mean, I, I used to, but when I moved from Martinsburg to Cumberland, it kind of got lost up in the sauce or whatever mm-hmm. you want to say. So, like, now, man, I just I just write my songs out, and if I like the song that I'm writing, I just keep repetitious with it. And when mm-hmm. I come to the studio, it's like clockwork. Just ready I don't even it. I don't even look mm-hmm. at my phone. I just It's all off the top of my yeah. head. So, like, that's that's kind of my whatever. But I'm, I'm about to start building a new studio so that I can do that mm-hmm. in case... Uh, Pat decides to move away or whatever he wants yeah. to do, you know what yeah. I mean? Whatever. That way I don't have to depend on nobody 24-7. That way if I have to, I can send him to Stems, do that. So mm-hmm. I'm working on that too. It's all part of the big process. But yeah. with a family, it makes, you know, you yeah. got you to gotta space it out. You got to oh, yeah, space definitely. it out. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What yeah. are you writing about? What do I write about? I'd like to think I'm like a, I don't know. I don't know what the, how you could characterize it, but I feel like I have a song for every situation. Okay. Like you I, just come home and write what happened that day or you could say music in a way is my own journal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like like uh like I have a song called City Limits where I talk about the opioid epidemic. Mm-hmm. That's and, a big you know, deal in like this area. Things yeah. things that uh things like that. I have a song 
where I'm talking about my girlfriend, the one that I love. I have a song where we're talking about getting turned up in the club, and you know, it's just yeah. it's kind of it's kind of like whatever I'm feeling in that mood. You know what I mean? Like almost on some like the Lil Wayne was a very big inspiration to mm-hmm. me coming up and everything, and the way how he writes and everything. Like he just kind of goes with the flow of it all. So I kind of took that and ran with it a little bit. But I like as I've progressed in my uh, maturity as an artist, I have become more structured with it. Mm-hmm. Like when I first started writing, I would just write. I wouldn't. Be, like, I was just talking to Gandhi about this in the studio, literally before I came here. Like I would not be able to decipher hook to verse. You know what I mean? It would just sound like it was all one big run on sentence. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I like that. But the music that means the most to me is uh, music that has substance. Mm-hmm. Music that means something. Yeah. Music that's that actually gonna way. travel. Like yeah. I like all mm-hmm. the music. I can. I I don't really like Little Pump, but I can listen to Little Pump and be like, all right, whatever. I understand why somebody would like this. But the music that hits home with me, that like I feel in my soul, is the music that's meant for the soul. That feels good. That makes you feel good. That's why I think I like soul music so much. Like I can listen to James Brown and Al Green oh, and God. all them all day. Like that used to be my routine. I would wake up in the morning, you know, roll a blunt, clean my house, and listen to soul music, man. Mm-hmm. And it just puts you in that good mood, that good vibe. It gives you that, I don't know, it's like an aura to it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, I don't know how to really describe it. I don't know yeah. if I answered your question the best way. No, you way. did. You did. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like you're more, uh, you talked about R&B a little bit, but it sounds like you're very lyrically yeah. driven. Yes. Where uh, some people, they, they enjoy the music aspect, but mm. the content is important to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about the bars, man. Like, actually, real bars, like, it matters to me. Like, I, I, I want to be one of the greats, you feel me? Like, I want to oh, yeah. be considered, like, a goat in my own aspect. Because I feel like that's actually, like, a real thing, like, people can be their own version of the greatest of all time. Like, you're your own version of the greatest of yourself. Yeah. You're your own greatest self. I'm my own greatest self. Everybody's their own GOAT. But at the end of the day, I I look up to the Biggies, the Pox, the Eminems, the Andre 3000s. Like, all that shit matters to me. So it's a little different. Like, like I said, I'm 26. So, like, I come from the era of... I understand Twitter and I understand talking to people in person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I understand a handshake. I understand social media and networking. Like, it's a little different. Whereas, like, people that might be, I don't know how old you guys are, but people that might be a little younger than, than me. Daniel's really old. Yeah, I'm in my 30s. Oh, I'll be 30, hey. 33 this month. <laughs> hey, man, you're still young in your own, you know what I mean? Like, eh. shit, man. In my mind. My yeah. body, not so much. <laughs> hey, I feel you that. But that, right here between the ears is where it matters, man. True. But uh, people that are younger than us, they don't give a damn about that shit. You know what I mean? They they do, but they don't. Like you might catch a, a teenager here and there that really gives a fuck about lyrics, but nine times out of ten, they don't give a fuck as long as it sounds good and the beats bumping. Yeah. And you know, <clears throat> excuse me, everything's good with that, then they don't care. Mm-hmm. It's all good. But for us, like we grew up in lyrical content. Like yeah. you know what I mean? So it's a different type of vibe. It definitely yeah. matters to me. The content matters for sure. Now you mentioned a lot of people that you listened to growing up. Who who are some of the the main people that you can kind of say, "Hey, when when I heard this song, I knew I wanted to do this." Yo, I, I, how about this? I'll give you my top three favorite rap songs, okay, and they kind of yeah. All right, my mm-hmm. number one, "Juicy" by Big. Yep. <clears throat> number Love two, number two. Uh, Today Was a Good Day by Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. And number three, Might Be Lose Yourself by Eminem. That's okay. a great song. So right there, mm-hmm. that gives you an idea of like... It's pretty diverse to them, too. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, a lot. Yeah. Like, it's a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. That that gives you like my contents of my mind of like, that's that's the music I want to make type of stuff right there. You feel me? Like, yeah. Well, that was the so. best era of music in general, like the, the early 90s through like the early 2000s yep. to me. Of course, I wasn't. You sound like an old curmudgeon right now. <laughs> Back in my <laughs> to day, to some people, uh, you know, obviously, I would have loved to grow up in the '70s with like you know the classic rock and stuff like that. But I think for my generation, you can't beat '90s. Right. Nin- '90s punk, '90s hip hop, you know, anything. Right. It was just great music, and then somewhere in the early 2000s, everything just kind of got twisted up, and yeah, you know, everybody wanted to sound like everybody else, and you started losing what a song really is right you know right and it's crazy though right because like i understand what you're saying about the Mm -hmm. golden age and i agree but at the same time i have like like when atlanta started popping like the south in general Mm -hmm. but mostly atlanta like little john and the east side boys Mm -hmm. and shit like that that's when you can kind of see like the conversion start to start to happen 
But at the same time, I fuck with Lil John and the East Side Boys so hard. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I fuck with all that down south. I'm very influenced by the south as well. I feel like, mm-hmm. like I like the Ti's, the Ludacris's, the Ti. Yeah, I love you know what T. I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. so like people, people try to take. Not saying you guys right now, but like mm-hmm. people in general try to take the south and be like, oh, they ruined hip hop. No, nah, they didn't. They just they had their own style that was their style that in the '90s got no respect. Mm-hmm. Like Outkast didn't even get respected like yeah. that. When they got awards, they got booed. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. so. Like, it's important just, to have your own style, or mm-hmm. just you're putting out the same thing as everybody else. Yep. Why? Why do you need to listen to that? Exactly. But see, that's that's what's happening now. That's why the game's so oversaturated now because they took Atlanta style or the South, whatever you want to say, and just fucking ran with it and was like, "Well, we're doing this. I don't give a fuck where I'm from." And now you don't have that diversity. Besides the West Coast, I feel like the West Coast still stays very mm. West Coastish. Yeah. Like, why did you just put out a new album and it sounds like a West Coast? thug ass old 90s album you know what i mean so like they still have their own sound but i feel like everywhere else in america they're just taking what the south does and runs with it so i'm trying to put my own little twist and my own sound and my own vibrations out to the universe and hopefully they grab onto it and run with it so you've called out a bunch of different styles from people you listen to Mm -hmm. someone that's never heard your any of your music before how would you describe your style your music more times than not, it's it's uh, aggressive. I like to, like when I rap, I like to have passion. Mm-hmm. I want yeah. you to feel what the fuck I'm saying. So like I have like I'm not DMX obviously. I'm not barking and shit, but I have that like <laughs> I have that to yeah. it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that grittiness. Nine mm-hmm. times out of ten, not every song, but like that's more than not like what I'm going with. It's mm-hmm. like you'll feel it. Like even if it's a hype turn up song, you'll still like. Like I just put out a song called Finger Roll. And that joint is just, it's, it's, it's a turn up song, but it's still just straight pumping in your ear, just straight aggression. Like, I have that workout music. You know what I mean? Okay, you put yeah. it in your headphones and we're going we go to pump some weights. But then at the same time, I, like I said, I have, a, I have love songs, I have other songs, but nine times out of ten, it's that aggressive, mm-hmm. that err style, go get them type of rapid rapping on the beat. So you mentioned uh, Lil Wayne a little bit ago mm-hmm. and his influence on you. Mm hmm. Now, I don't know what other types of music you're into, but how do you feel about Lil Wayne touring with Blink-182? Because Blink-182 is like one of my all-time favorite bands. And right, right. I love Lil Wayne. Right. And they came out with that video where they didn't tune anything, and it sounded... Lil Wayne was great. Blink-182 was awful right. in that video. But I don't... like. I, it kind of like... It was weird to me, but it also kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, especially with Travis Barker's kind of tie into the yeah. hip-hop scene. Yeah. Um, but how do you feel about them touring together? I think it's like a... <clears throat> Remember how Jay-Z and Linkin Park did their yeah. thing? Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same context. Mm-hmm. But I feel like, like you said, I think they, their styles fit well together. Yeah. And I think Lil Wayne and Travis, I mean, I don't know his relation with anybody else, but I mm-hmm. feel like they're pretty cool together and everything. And um, But at the same time, it feels like one of those like desperation moves if that yeah, makes sense that, that's what it felt like, like they're like they're too. like they're they feel like they're falling off and they're like if we can if we converge and come together mm. we can make something pop like twice in nostalgia yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, i mean don't get me wrong i'm sure every show is going to sell out and they're going to oh, make tons of fucking money but at the end of the day if we're all being realistic like they're at the the end the downward spiral of their careers you know yeah like wayne might have a cool verse here and there but most mm. of his shit is like all right, bro, I've heard this like a thousand times now. Like, if I could take Wayne back to like drought threes and the droughts oh, and stuff, yeah. Wayne, yeah. But the Wayne to mm-hmm. me is still the most quotable rapper of all time. Mm-hmm. I can think of a Wayne line for almost anything at the end of the day, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, so, and I have a lot of debates with people on that mm-hmm. about him being the most quotable rapper, but I feel like that's pretty mm-hmm. legit. So, yeah, I think where he fell off with me, the Carter three, yeah, everything before that, like the block is hot, great. Uh-huh. Um, like whenever he was like, what, 15, 16? Yeah. He was, Great, and then something happened. I don't know if it was drugs. I mean, what is definitely was the perks, and yeah, um, for sure. But where he just went all kind of crazy, like all off the wall crazy, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even just like a little bit. You know, it was like here's this album, this next album, I'm an alien. It's like yeah, the uh, <laughs> like what, what are you trying to do? The, uh, I am not a human being. Shit. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like after the Carter Three. Like Carter Four was weird, mm-hmm. and then you know we had that long ass pause between Carter Four and Carter Five, mm-hmm. and then the Carter Five came out, and it, it was solid. I don't think it was a bad project, mm-hmm. but I think because everybody waited so long and the expectations were so oh, fucking yeah. out of this world, and mm-hmm. it just didn't meet it, you know. But Wayne will always be Wayne to me because I grew up in the golden era of Wayne, 
So mm-hmm. like it's still like it's one of those like things that a childhood thing like you still hold on to it no matter oh, what yeah. like so that's how, I mean I don't know man Wayne Wayne will always be Wayne but yeah he he definitely went off the deep end just like Kanye Kanye is one of my favorites yeah. as well <laughs> Kanye is one of my favorite I think he's a genius in his own way but now he's just fucking crazy as yeah. fuck he just he says a bunch of outlandish ass shit mm-hmm. you know and sometimes like he it almost like he almost mind fucks you because sometimes you'll 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 read it and you'll be like. That makes fucking sense. And then like you'll reread it and be like, nah, <laughs> no, you're fucked yeah. up, bro. Like, nah, nah, nah. Like, He's yeah, really like, good at being able to pop Twitter and just like, mm-hmm. all right, Kanye's twen- trending again <laughs> yeah. on Twitter. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's that Kardashian mm-hmm. curse. Yeah. Yeah. That shit's real. I don't care what anybody says. That shit is real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody who fucks with a Kardashian is fucked. Yeah. Got, got a Cowboys <clears throat> fan over here, Tony Romo. Yeah. Oh, Romo was with one of them? Was it, no he wait no, who, he who was ruined with, Tony Romo? He was with the uh, uh, the Underwood right Carrie Underwood or some shit. It was one of those blonde singers. Yeah, yeah, he it was, was a country singer. Yeah, yeah, it was her. Oh, Jessica Simpson and then Carrie Underwood. Yeah. Either way, Tony yeah. Romo sucks. That was the main point of that. Oh, cool. I'm a Rams fan, so I don't care. I'm kidding. I love you, Daniel. Yeah, I'm sorry about the Super Bowl. Me too, bro. Oh, that was- I'm sorry about your loss in the playoffs. That's yeah, all right. Yeah, easy. We didn't. We didn't. Did you, you guys <laughs> ran like? <laughs> Almost more yards in that game than like yeah. the last three. Like yeah. it was, it was nuts. Like our defensive line could. We went, we went off on yeah. y'all. Yeah, I was, but, I was but, nervous though. I was nervous. I was a little nervous. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, because I think I don't know if it was like the fourth quarter or something where y'all came back. It was like a mm-hmm. touchdown or some shit, and then mm-hmm. CJ ran that touchdown. I was like, yeah. all right, we got him. We good. Yep. Yeah. I was extremely. I don't remember the second half of that game because by the end, by by the end of halftime, I knew that we weren't gonna win right just you can you can feel it in right. a game like it whenever and and being a dallas fan if we don't do that if we give up that much in the first half we're not coming back in the second half right yeah ever. yeah so you know especially we were punishing y'all man oh, like it was bad like run game wise we were yeah. punishing y'all yeah. so i know everybody was hurting ribs mm-hmm. was hurting knees was probably buckling yep so but then you know am i the only one that feels like all like championship games are scripted now it feels like it. I didn't even watch the Super Bowl. Because I swear to how how does my Rams average, like, I think it was like 32 a game in the regular season. And then the Super Bowl, we, what, six? We had a we had a, uh, a donut at halftime? Come on, bro. And then I, I don't mean, know. I mean, there's also other factors. Like, I mean, not even, like, who you're playing. Like, one, you're, you're getting out coached by one of the best coaches that's ever coached i mean that's true um your your coach is young it's your first time he's his first time in the super bowl your quarterback's young first time in the super bowl so right. i think a lot of it had to do with nerves too i mean because yeah. Jared Goff did not look comfortable yeah he was he was throwing all. ducks and all yeah. that he, he was exposed. throwing Peyton Manning ducks. yeah yeah he did i don't think he got exposed i think jared's nice i, I think he's not bad he's just still really young yeah yeah is. you're right you're right and I, I i think we'll get there again i'm a little worried about uh Gurley's knee and his arthritis mm-hmm. and shit but uh, I think we'll get back to mm-hmm. that. We'll always be at that status now. I think Sean McVay holds a standard. Yeah. We got all our key players locked in. So that's all that fucking matters. But we're talking about my team. Who's your favorite team? You're I'm talking a Steelers about... fan. Yeah, oh, weird. Big Ben. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're pretty close to Pittsburgh here. I'm yeah. a, I'm a fan. How, how does someone from Martinsburg become a, a St. A Rams fan? fan? Okay. That's, that's a cool story behind that. Uh, fucking. So when I was a kid, Nelly was my favorite rapper. Okay. He's from St. Louis. So the Rams were in St. Louis. At the time, and they were a good team at that time. So we're yeah, talking like ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. ninety nine. I'm seven years old. I'm a fucking kid, and uh, I just became a fan because I it, Nelly Nelly uh, Country Grammar came out. That was the first album I've ever bought, and then I don't know. I just went two and two. He's from St. Louis. The Rams are from St. Louis. They were a good team. That's my favorite rapper, and I was just like, bam, fucking, I'm a Rams that makes fan. A lot of sense. Yeah. So I'm I'm a Pittsburgh homer, except for there's no NBA team in the area. So I grew mm. up watching Michael Jordan play. So oh, I'm a yeah. Bulls so fan. You're a Bulls fan? Yeah. You guys are trash. Now. We are really bad. And we <laughs> don't even we're, we're so bad we don't even know how to tank to get a number one draft. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, we yeah, get yeah. like seventh or eighth pick every year. Mm. That's just gonna keep us right there mm. in that spot. Yeah, where you get like uh who'd y'all get the last couple years? It's that foreign dude, the stretch four. He's nice though. He got a jumper, McConan or uh, uh, Markinen. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and then yeah, yeah, yeah. we got uh, Wendell Carter Jr. last year. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting all these uh, nice, solid role player picks. I mean, yo, I've realized in the NBA draft, right? If you're not in the top three picks, you're getting like a role What's player, average yeah. ass player. Yeah. 
if you're not in the top three, then you're just you might as well just try to sell that or trade that pick because it's not going to be nobody that's nothing crazy. Like this year, it's going to be uh, I don't know how much you guys keep up with sports. It's, it's going to be, be Zion, Zion and John ja Morant, and then after that is I don't even know uh, R J Barrett. R J Barrett, he's cool, but man, I don't know how his game is going to translate into the the pros because he's like he's six be... seven, but he's soft. He's not he's not like I don't see him trying to go. You know what I mean? I don't know. No, I see that too. I think he's gonna. He has the potential. It's there. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he's more ready today. Like starting out, starting today, he would probably average more points, maybe more rebounds than Zion. But Zion has the ceiling as the roof. It's Zion the, has the 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 ceiling as the roof, <laughs> and the marketing <laughs> ability of it all is the biggest thing. You can market Zion today, and he's gonna sell out your tickets just because of who he is. And and now they have that big ass thing. You know how, how during the college season, how he jumped out of his shoe or whatever, and it fucking broke. Oh yeah. So that that's gonna be like some marketing ass sale. He's for gonna when have he gets to a have a due. special reinforced shoe made. That's what I'm saying. And they're gonna be like, even Zion can't jump out of these shoes. Well, exactly. You should buy them for two twenty five. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> nobody bro, else they, in the world is gonna need that shoe because nobody else is yep. six ten, three hundred pounds, but. Yep, and can jump out the gym. Yeah, he's a it's, freak. Yeah, he is a fucking. He's a be. He's he's he is the new LeBron, in my opinion. I think he has the potential to be the new LeBron because of the hype. Because I mean, if he didn't have to go to college for a year, he would have came out of high school. Oh yeah, he'd already be in the league. We'd already ha- we'd already be seeing what he could do in the league. So, so I know nothing about the NBA. I know I haven't watched since Michael Jordan was playing. <laughs> yeah, <I feel laughs> that's how long it's been. Yeah, I feel you, bro. I don't so, know shit about hockey or baseball like that. Yeah. So you've mentioned a lot of old, older, like I'm not older, but you've mentioned a lot of the classic rappers and right. R&B people that you listen, listen to. Who are you listening to that's putting out music right now? Who do you listen to on the way over? Who do I listen to on the way over? I listen to my session files. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 uh, no, 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 I, I know. Yeah, I was yeah. fucking with you. I no, I know. Uh, in general, um. Uh, I like I like a little bit of everything, but like Drake's probably my favorite one out of right now. I know that's kind of like what everybody's answer is, but that man's just fucking uberly talented. Like I can listen to any type of Drake song, and almost all of them have some type of potential to be a hit. So I like Drake. I like uh I like Money Man. He's more of a trap artist from like the South or whatever. He's hard. I was listening to him on the way up here. Um, who else was I listening? I listened to YG's new album on the way here. Uh, I kind of just like when new albums come out. I give just it, download on my Apple Music. Give it a listen. Mm-hmm. Yep. I try to listen to a little bit of everybody, at least hip hop and rap wise. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like that way I, I know what's going on in the in the the realm that I'm trying to be in. And at the same time, stay in tune and just be in the conversation. Like if somebody wants to talk about some shit, I can talk about it and chop it up with them. Like I, I like DJ Khaled's new album. But at the same time, like he's like one of those people that puts out an album that's almost pointless. Cause it's yeah. not gonna be actually him. He just puts yeah. a bunch of good ass collabs together. Yeah. So that's his gimmick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you can't hate on that man, bro. He went from fucking DJ Khaled, we the best, to Snapchat's mm-hmm. number one fucking trending thing. And fucking, he's got his, like, I, I have more respect for him than anything about him putting his son in everything. Mm-hmm. Like, last album he put out, not this one, but the last one, his son was the, um, what is that? What is that term? Like, the, basically, he was the head producer or whatever of it. He put mm-hmm. him on there. That way, if he ever dies, his son gets all the money. You know what I mean? And this one, it's the father of Assad. He puts his son in everything. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of respect for that because I try, now that I've became a father and everything, like, I've tried to mature my lyrics as well and try to make music that my sons can listen to and that I can push on to them one day. Like, not make them do music, but, like, mm-hmm. give them the shit and be proud of it for mm-hmm. so. I fuck with that hard. That puts a whole new perspective when you have children. Like you said, you have to... A lot of the rap culture is not children suited. Yeah. So it it changed your whole mindset about what you're putting out? Kind of like the context. More than anything, the cursing. Mm-hmm. I try not to cuss as much. Because like I never really cussed a lot. But still, I don't want my sons... Because they listen to my music just like I listen to my music. I don't want my son being like, fuck, bitch, shit, damn. Yeah. But you know what yeah. I mean? I don't mm-hmm. want him doing all that shit. So I try my best not to cuss as much. I still might have some words in there or whatever because, I mean, that's just life. We're all humans. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it definitely did. It made me want to make more mature music and not just talk about, like, trapping and rapping and fucking bitches and getting money and all that shit. I wanted to actually make it, like, like a real fucking thing that you can, like, like how we're talking about the 90s era, shit that we still hold on to and that mm-hmm. you can take with you the rest of your life. That's That put the perspective on that. So it made me more 
more of a man with my music and more of a man in life. And I'm thankful for it, for real. My, my kids were a blessing and they helped me become who I am today. How old are your kids? Uh, Three and two. Three and two? And I have one on the way. Oh, nice. I remember, I think we talked about, I think you had run your girlfriend into the ER the last time we had discussed yeah, 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 yeah. How, yeah. How'd all that go? It was fine. She was just super dehydrated mm. and she was just like, you know, paranoid, pregnant. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she was just really, really Happens dehydrated. Me every time I get pregnant, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you, bro. Yeah, man. Yep. So everything's good with that. It's a blessing. We find out in a couple of weeks what we're having. Awesome. I'm hoping it's a girl so I can be done. Yeah, I got two boys <laughs> yeah. and a girl, and I don't want any more. Yeah, get a dog, and you're done. There you go. <sighs> See, that was the, my parents' thing. They they wanted a girl. They they had three boys and then mm-hmm. a girl. And they're like, okay, we're done, and then. Surprise. They had another girl. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like, See, and that's what yeah. me and my girl were just talking about that the other day. Excuse me. She was saying like, uh, oh, because I told her I was done or whatever. And she was like, no, you won't. In a couple of years, you'll want another one. Nah, I don't. I'm, I'm, mm. And if I have to, I'll just wrap it up from now on. I mean, I, <laughs> fuck you. I mean, I love my kids to death and their blessings. But until the paper's right, I can't have, mm-hmm. I can't be popping out anymore. Yeah. But, you know, so I'm blessed with that too, though, because, you know, I just got to. A better job and it's actually crazy right like because now i work for the state i work for a state of maryland mm-hmm. i work with uh djs the department of juvenile services oh, so awesome. like every day i work with interact with city kids mm-hmm. that, that are locked up or whatever like so like i don't want to say i'm a correctional officer because i'm not i don't carry cuffs i've never put a kid in cuffs i basically they try to say we're big ass babysitters or whatever mm-hmm. but you know so i work with troubled ass kids every day and i was a troubled kid too like i came up in some fucked up shit or whatever so like it just put it's just crazy how it's all full circle mm-hmm. you know what i mean like how it all is just coming together slowly but surely and that's a beautiful thing man mm-hmm. it's awesome that's awesome that's though dope. like yeah working with you know, yeah man it's, it's cool because like you get kids from all different backgrounds and different mm-hmm. areas of life and shit you know i can't talk like crazy about it because yeah all oh, the yeah, whatever yeah. you know what but I mean? you have I stories that you yeah, yeah, every yeah, day. yeah 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 you know what i'm saying like i got there's kids from all over maryland baltimore dc Anne Arundel. so like and they all the it's crazy the other day i went into work and they all found out i rap now so like they're Probably all the like coolest kid on the yeah, 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 yeah you know what i mean they were like what's up exactly and i was like what the fuck are you talking about exactly he's like yeah we were just watching your videos in english class oh cool that's what's up you know what i mean like at the, at, it's like it's like a, a gift and a curse you know what i mean because mm-hmm. you're like one part you want to like keep your business side business yeah. side and then your professional side mm-hmm. professional side but mm-hmm. it's awesome man it's dope and i get to interact with them and help them and put them back into the community mm-hmm. and like Oh, you know music I mean, helps so. mm-hmm. with that because music makes a difference. People listen yeah. and people relate language. to music. Yeah. 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 Everybody yeah. can listen to a song and feel mm-hmm. something from what it. I, yeah, man, you're right. Like, that was Hitler's first tactic. Do y'all know that? When he took over Germany and shit, his first tactic was to take over the radio waves because hmm. if they hear it and shit, then, bam, they click in and they buy in. And then, bam, that was his first tactic. Hmm. And that's one of the laws of power. I mean, not the music part, but you know what I mean? Well, like yeah, shit like that. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. If it's, it's constantly like, there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like being brainwashed with now how like social media and shit oh, like yeah. that, all that is. You know yeah. how, like, I know y'all notice how when you get on your phone and you search something up on Google and then you get on Facebook and it's like the same thing you were just fucking searching. Yeah. And you're it's like, all intertwined. Yeah, yeah. All and it. it's wild as and shit. And sometimes you think of something and then mm-hmm. it's on your Facebook yeah. and you're like, what yeah, the hell? I didn't even like, type that in. Yeah. Say it out loud and your phone hears you. Yeah. What I don't like is when. And I'll, I'll, like, go buy something, like, I don't know, a, a, an Xbox game on Amazon or something. And then I get on Facebook, and it's like, hey, do you want to buy this game? No. Facebook, I just bought just that bought game. That, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, man. See, what do you mean? Shit, that shit's weird, bro. I don't know. It's I, all connected. I lo- yeah, I love technology. Yeah. I don't love technology at the same time. That's the way I am, too. Like, if it yeah. wasn't for podcasting in my band, I wouldn't even have social media. Oh, you got a band? Yeah. What kind of, kind of, what kind of band do you have? It's like a alternative rock almost. That's dope. Really, like like you, very emotionally driven. Like every, right. um, all the music that that I write is it comes from a, a point in my life. Right. Where you know. Oh, you're the singer. No, mm-hmm. I, I I do guitar. Okay. I just write the music. I let my singer. Oh, okay. I, I let my singer know what I'm writing the music about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I try to portray like how I'm feeling through the music, and then he takes the idea and then writes the lyrics on top of it. So. So basically, like. An actor getting a script and trying to fit the role. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. But our our vocalist is a really interesting lyricist. Mm. Um, you can read the lyrics and listen to it, and you're not quite sure what he's talking about until about the hundredth time that you've like looked it over, and you're like, right. oh, 
Okay. Right, and you put it so, up, puts it all in perspective. Yeah. That's a so, beautiful thing mm-hmm. too, though. Like so, sometimes mm-hmm. with music, for me, like sometimes I want lines that go over your head and make you have to rewind and be like, oh shit, what the fuck did he say? And then sometimes I want those lines that are like direct as fuck. Like you get it yeah. off the rip. Like mm-hmm. this is what I'm saying. This is how I'm portraying it. This is what I want you to know. Mm-hmm. And this is how I feel about it. Like I wrote a song for my brother that passed away last year called Angry. Mm-hmm. And that song just, you can listen to it and it just tells itself. Like I don't have yeah. this. You listen to that song, I don't got to say anything else. Like yeah. you know how I felt about it, how I feel about it still to this day. And the aggression and anger I feel behind it. Mm-hmm. it it's self-explanatory, and I like that shit. That, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, so That's dope, though. Do you mm-hmm. perform live often? I know you have a full-time job, full-time I mean, family. I, 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 I try to do as many performances as possible. Now, in these areas, they're not jumping out the fucking woodwork well, with yeah. performances either. So it's like... Anytime an opportunity presents itself and it, it can fit, or if I get notified in advance and I can make it work with my schedule, then I'm all for it. Like, I love performing. To me, that's honestly the greatest uh, feeling of it all is the performance. Mm-hmm. When even, you know, because, I mean, I don't know how far you guys have gone, but in my, the most people I've ever performed for is like 200 people. Mm-hmm. So, fucking, most of the time, I can see the fucking door when I'm rapping. Yeah. But if those 20 fucking people are like, you're the shit, or they like my music and they they feel it, then that's that's the greatest feeling in the world. That's what the mm-hmm. fuck we do it for. Like, yeah, we do it to make it an emotional connection with ourselves because sometimes that, like, music is my gateway. It's my how I express myself. Mm-hmm. But you also want other people to feel that expression. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want that attention, that, that acknowledgement because it's just human nature. Mm-hmm. So that performance thing to me is, is the greatest gift of it all, for real. That's important because especially when you're trying to build a fan base... You said there are 200 people there. I'd say 20 of them are there because they know you, and right. then 20 of them are there because of the guy mm-hmm. after you, 20 mm-hmm. of them are there for the guy before you. And what you do on stage builds fans as yep. you go around. Yeah, word of mouth is the greatest mm-hmm. the greatest uh, advertisement there is. Yeah. Like, I can post all the songs I want on Spotify and Apple Music, and I can do all the fucking videos and shit I want, and da-da-da, and that's all great, and it all contributes in its own way. But if I can get off stage and shake your hand <clears throat> and look you in the face and be like, thank you, or like whatever the fuck it is, that, that resonates more mm-hmm. like than just said, something over a phone. Twitter, uh, handshake over a Twitter. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, yeah, man. I love mm-hmm. performing, you. I love that art of it. And there's a really an art to performing, though. Some people are trash-ass Some performers. people are bad. They're, and it's really bad. And yeah. some people are, are really good. You know, it's just, it's a, I, I, I like to think I'm in the middle. I don't mm-hmm. want to say I'm trash because right. I'm me. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I could always get better. Yeah. So, yeah. It's always room for well, improvement. Well, a lot of there, people, yeah. they um, <clears throat> come, if they're making music, they're an artistic kind of person. A lot of times, artistic people are a little bit introverted. Mm-hmm. And so when they get out there and, I mean, you sing about some very emotional songs, it's right. hard to, it's hard to do that because you're, you're putting yourself mm-hmm. out there. Right. And so, it's it's hard to think about the performance aspect and not just standing there and being awkward on stage because people mm-hmm. can tell when you're uncomfortable. Yeah. If you're comfortable and you're having fun, it's easier for the audience yeah. to have fun. And my advice to anybody out there who's listening or going to listen or whatever, if you're not that guy that's comfortable being on stage, because I wasn't always that guy and I'm still not that guy sometimes, just wear some sun sh- sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Get that way they can't, they, can't, they can't look at your eyes. That was my biggest thing when I first started performing was looking people in their eyes mm-hmm. while I'm performing and, like, trying to read how they feel about it. Mm-hmm. And that was hard for me. Like, I used to close my eyes sometimes when I would perform. Mm-hmm. I would still perform my heart out and I would do my thing, but I didn't look at anybody. And now, like, I've gotten better at that where I'm not afraid to look at people. I'm not afraid to look you in your face and wrap my ass off or, like, just jump mm-hmm. up and down and go wild and shit. Like, before, I just used to be really, really fucking nervous. Mm-hmm. So that's my advice on the performing. Mm-hmm. If you're scared, just wear some fucking sunglasses mm-hmm. and it helps a lot. I, st- I still get that way. I remember when we started this band, I hadn't played on stage in about a year and a half, two years. It was a little, Yeah, about two years. Um, and before that, in all the bands that I'd been in since, you know, high school, mm-hmm. I'd, I've played over like 350 shows. Right. In four different countries. That's dope. And the first time my band played, mm-hmm. my new band, I was like, I don't want to do this. Like, I made myself sick, so I was so, like, nervous. Yeah, yeah, but it's like, yeah. So it's like, it doesn't, and, and it wasn't the fact, like, that it was a new band and everything. It was, like, just being on stage is what did it. Yeah. It was like, so even people who have that, you know, experience on stage can still, you know, oh, yeah. be that way. Oh, I know? still get so, the butterflies. Yeah. I think that's normal. Like, yeah. when I played sports, before every game, it doesn't matter how much you practice, how much mm-hmm. repetition you have. 
before you that first snap or that first you know the tip off like mm. you're nervous you got them the butterflies going but once you get into your set oh yeah and you start you start just <clears throat> rhythm and it's just mm. a rhythm and it just it just plays off each other and mm -hmm. it's a it's a beautiful thing for real man mm. it's a big ass masterpiece yeah for sure man it's dope that's why we always uh the first song in our set we t we, we practice everything like a lot but the first song in the set we always like make sure that's down like and we practice it a little bit more than the others because if you start off strong and then you can get in that comfort zone and mm -hmm. you're comfortable enough with that song and then that just you know the whole yeah. show you know but if i go in and i just completely fuck up the first song yeah then it kind of paves its way for the rest of the set if i let my mind go yep. being like that you yep. know? yeah yeah so, i definitely feel that man mm -hmm. it's it's because one thing leads to another, it's just a snowball effect. And that's mm -hmm. what anything, though, like, it doesn't matter if it's music, life, gold, like, all that shit is a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's all about your mindset, too, though, man. Like, everybody got to have the right mind for whatever you're trying to do, yo. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I'm one of those type of people about, like, I believe in energies and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, what you put out into the world is what you're going to get back type shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, got to just have that fucking mindset. If I'm gonna fucking do it and I got this, I'm gonna fucking kill it no matter what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. I'm a fucking beast. Mm -hmm. That's what I like before every show, I would go look in the mirror and just fucking tell myself, I got this, I'm gonna kill it. Da, da, da. So that's like, uh, do, have you heard NF's new song that he just put out? NF's. Who's that? NF. Well, anyway, he's a rapper. He just put out a new song and one of his lines in there it, it's exactly what you said. If you look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you'll never be great, you'll never you'll be, be great. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was pretty cool. I think isn't he like considered a Christian rapper? Yeah, he's a Christian rapper. And he's uh and there's nothing wrong with that by the way either. But he has that one song. I think I know who you're talking about. I can't think of the song. He had like one song that went like real up the yeah, charts uh, or some shit. Yeah, I think it's uh Let You Down. The it like one one of his songs just went completely nuts. Yeah, like, if I fucking heard it, I, I would know yeah. who you're talking about. So that's yeah. dope, though. Yeah. I mean, that's real shit, though. Like, really, like, if you don't fucking believe in yourself, who the fuck else is going to believe in yourself? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you have to believe in you before anybody else fucking believes in you. And that's that's one thing about us artists. We all understand to a point because nobody gives a fuck about us making music, to be honest. Like, I mean, once you get them to give a fuck, they give a fuck. But at the end of the day, you're just another person, especially in the rap world, of a fucking million billion people who think they can rap now. Everybody with a computer can put out a song. Yeah. I hate that. Mm -hmm. Because it makes people like me that actually care about this shit and are actually really passionate about this shit fucking... I'm, I'm like there, but I'm in the back burner because this person's cousin is this and that, mm -hmm. da, 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 but really they're fucking trash, mm -hmm. you know? And that's why I was saying at the very beginning when we said, like, music's only 10% of the fucking business. They don't give a fuck. They don't care if you make good music or not. They care about what can you portray, what are you, and what can we use you to be. And that's all that matters, yo. And I fucking hate that about the industry. Like, if I could just make the music and not care about the industry, it, it would be golden. But the industry, I fucking hate the music industry. It's hard for, again, artistic people. You're putting out music. You're passionate about music. And then you hit the business aspect of it. You got to book shows. You got to sell T-shirts. You got to... Mm -hmm record your music and that buries a lot of the creative passion and even if you're the most passionate person about your song in the whole world it might never get listened to by anybody right and that's like one of the another thing that i like about little wayne as well is like he he's even said it his own self in his own interviews and stuff like i'm the artist i don't do anything else everybody else does everything else they tell me where to go and all that but i'm an artist i don't care about anything i don't worry about anything but making music and if i could have that Mm -hmm. And fucking just go on the tours, do the interviews and all that. I'm, I mean, I'm cool with it regardless. You got to put in the work to get to where you want to go. Do the work. But it just makes it, you know what I mean? It makes mm -hmm. it simpler as the artist to not like try to fucking do it all in one. Mm -hmm. But I mean, at the same time, that's, there's, a, there's perks to being independent, mm -hmm. you know? I don't have to worry about anybody trying to take control of my creativity mm -hmm. or take 60 and I get 40 or own my fucking masters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Shit like that. So they, they both have their pros and cons. Mm -hmm. The so, biggest problem that I have with the rec like the recording companies and, you know, record labels is the deadlines. It's yeah. like, and that's why so many bands, their first album is great. And then their next album sucks is because they're on a deadline to put out music right. whenever they've had their whole life to write that first album. Yeah. And then you give them a year or two or however long, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a musician, if I had somebody over my shoulder, like, Hey, if you don't have an album out and it, it could be two years and just having that deadline would make either I'm going to write crap 
like literal crap or I would end up, you know, getting sued from the company because I couldn't do it. Right. Um, because the way I, I, I've got a song that I've been working on for what, 11 years now? Uh-huh. It's still not finished. Really? You know, so it's like, you know, and, and there's some songs where like I can sit down in a day and finish it and mm-hmm. it's, and it's good. Um, some, you know, it just depends, but you put a deadline on it and that's what really like, I feel like kills, yeah, it kills know, the a lot vibe. of bands. You yeah, because know? you feel music is supposed to be a natural thing. Like I tell you, I make music how I feel mm-hmm. in that moment. And when you got a deadline and fucking executives and people breathing down your fucking neck, mm-hmm. You feel the pressure, and you're just like, man, fuck it. Let's just put something together. Yeah. So I definitely feel you. But I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Song for 11 years. Mm-hmm. Why isn't it finished? Every time I go to work on it, it's not exactly. like I, I know where I want it to go. And the thing is, is every time, it, it's only about a minute and a half worth of music right now. Right. Um, it's not exactly where I want it to go. And then every time I start writing more on top of it, that typically turns into another song. Right. So I'm like, it's not exactly what I'm going for with it. Um so it's just, and I, I don't work on it constantly. Like I'll pick it up a couple times a year and kind of mess around with right, it. Right, right, right. You know, it's just, it's just something that's been there for that long that I know that it's eventually going to be finished. But every time I do work on it, it's either not good or, or not good enough, not good enough to what I want it to right. be, or it turns into a whole new project in its in itself. So I'm not gonna lie, you that that one might be the one. Mm-hmm. I mean, fuck, it's, eleven years, bro. Like, yeah, or or it could come out and everybody's like, "That's the worst thing you've ever written." You know, it's always yeah. it's always a flip flop <laughs> yeah. thing. Like, that's what Pat even said about mm-hmm. the picture. He was like, "They're either gonna think it's really funny oh, or I really fucking hilarious. weird." Yeah. And I was like, "I think they're gonna think it's fucking funny, yo." So that's yeah. dope. Yeah. When you put that song out, the name of it needs to be. This song took me eleven years to write. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you hate it. Well, I mean, it, it could it could be twenty by the time I'm done with Goodness. it. Though. Hey, man, but like, I don't know if you're gonna make it that long. Yeah, true. <laughs> Damn, man. Shit, I hope so. No, yeah, just mess around. <laughs> oh no, 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 yeah, you good, bro? I fucking, mm. That's funny shit, man. But like, and that's another thing about music, right? Is like, uh, in hip hop, I feel like there's like an age limit to what you can do before you make it, or like, you know what I mean? Like, if you want, once you hit like thirty, if you haven't made it in hip hop, you're like, you're pushing the edges. Mm-hmm. Whereas like country, mm-hmm. like Willie Nelson's like what, like. 80 fucking something years old yeah. and he's still fucking torn mm-hmm. like that shit's insane to me yo like it's just it's just so crazy how like one genre of music has like not I'm not saying it, it's just like an imaginary line or imaginary rule you feel me like yeah. the they want you to be really young but in every other genre like you can be fucking dirt and still fucking mm-hmm. make music and people still buy it so I would yeah. love to see like an 80 year old rapper right now that'd be dope yeah you feel me giving yeah, his own perspective great. of the whole world that'd yeah. be crazy yo and I'm not gonna lie too like now I'm talking about Willie Nelson and shit like one day when I make it I'm gonna make a fucking country album I'm gonna learn how to play the guitar okay. and I'm gonna make a fucking country <laughs> album like, are you gonna Old Town Road like ah <laughs> uh, nah I mean we might Ray, be like uh, you and Billy Ray Cyrus <laughs> hey hey yo people you can that song is actually it is over like it I mean, that song is the most popular song in the world right now. Right. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but I mean, think about it. That's an awesome, perfect idea. If we're really thinking about it from a marketing perspective. Oh, yeah. Like, fucking rap and country. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we had Nelly and Tim McGraw, mm-hmm. but that wasn't like this. Because this song is short and it's catchy mm-hmm. and it's easy for people to just grasp onto, yo. It's like, like a minute and a half long and, yeah, and that, it's over. Yeah, and then Billy Ray Cyrus comes on talking about he's a marble man. He's kicking on back and shit. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yo, it's fucking... <laughs> but it's dope, though. It was like almost needed for the culture mm-hmm. just to just to like open the doors for all those other people excuse me because like i don't know if y'all know about like there's actually like country rap now yeah like people from like the, the south that be like and they're fucking they be mudding in the videos and shit i don't really listen to it it's not really my style but still though so like mm-hmm. that just opened that whole bridge for them even mm-hmm. more now to like open people's eyes because i you know i'm all about the fucking unity of the world so if we can bring two cultures that Nine times out of ten, the the fans of those cultures probably fucking hate each other for no fucking dumbass reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If we can fucking do that and bam, put them together, and then there you go. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's dope, yo. And the little Nas X dude, I don't know how old he is or whatever. I think I really think the original reason he wrote the song was for a parody. He was trying to be funny, and then it just blew up and blew became up. the yeah. And he was like, oh fuck it, I'm gonna run with it. Because yep. now every time you see him, he needs a cowboy hat, cowboy <laughs> yeah. boots, cowboy. I saw a video of. 
on of him on Facebook where he's in like a elementary school and all the kids are just screaming yeah. that song at the top <laughs> of their lungs. Yeah, yeah, like, I seen going that nuts. shit too. God. Yeah, I seen that shit too, yo. Fucking just jumping up and down, <laughs> like fucking five and six years old, yo. And you know, people were looking at us when we were in elementary school, like, are they singing that? Are they singing that Britney Spears song? Yeah. Like, what is wrong <laughs> with Spears. them? The Oops, I did it again. Yeah, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yo, my fucking. I have a bad experience with Britney Spears, yo. Oh, you met her? No, 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 no. I never met that crazy bitch. No, my fucking, my grandma was, she was a Mormon. God rest her soul and everything. I ain't trying to push you out there, Grandma Lee. She was a Mormon. And I was trying to buy a rap CD. And she was like, nah, you can have this. And gave me fucking Britney Spears CD, yo. I was pissed as fuck, bro. I was like nine years old. And she's like, you can either have this or nothing. And I was like, I guess I want some type of music to fly on this five-hour plane ride. She gave me fucking Britney Spears. It was fucking weird. That's funny, though, because you would think she would, like, give you, I don't know, the Bill Gaither band and try to, like... I don't know. (laughs) Because I guess because it was just, just, that's what was there. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Because we weren't, like, in FYE or anything. It was, like, we were in, like, Walmart or something. Mm -hmm. It was fucking weird. Most of the time you hear, it's like, well, here's this gospel music. You have to listen to this. Mm -hmm. That other music you can't listen to but yeah she's like well here's britney spears <laughs> yeah can't can't listen yeah, to was, tupac i'm sorry it was, <laughs> it was it was weird as fuck and i'm not very proud of that moment at all but since we were talking about britney spears it made me think of it <laughs> yeah. like i can't believe that i should have i should have tried to find like sting or something and like <laughs> bought that album instead or something the, the, the crazy thing is, is if she would have like let you get a hip-hop album then you'd probably be singing like you know pop music right instead of rapping yeah because i so, would i would have fell off in my ears yeah, yeah exactly so <laughs> yeah you know? i mean i guess in a way Yo, thanks grandma can, can, yeah. <laughs> appreciate you grandma lee i appreciate that thank you so, britney spears well yeah, i mean I, the inspiration yeah I, I i definitely broke that cd when i got off the plane <laughs> i did not want that did shit. you shave your head in frustration oh <laughs> <laughs> no but i did dye my hair blonde when i was a kid like eminem, eminem. Oh, okay i also yes. i was thinking more like is it justin timberlake like Frost the tips. Frost the tips. I also no. had frost the tips in it, middle school. Yeah, I think I had highlights right. one time, but the biggest thing I remember off the top of my head is the blonde hair and yeah. trying to be the real <clears throat> slim shady. <laughs> well, please and that's up. crazy. Before, <clears throat> before I even started making music, that I was doing shit like that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's, it's weird how like I was just talking in the studio about this shit too. How shit comes full circle. Mm-hmm. Like my rap name was not always exactly. It used to be my first rap name when I was a kid was Flyboy. Then it was Flyboy Blaze. And then my nickname back home, everybody calls me Blaze. So it was Blaze for a long time. And then I matured and I made it exactly. But then my mom has like this uh, bowl or whatever the fuck you want to call it that I used to write on when I was like five, six, seven years old. Or, or no, five, not five, six, five, fifth or sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And I wrote exactly <laughs> all over it, just how my rap name is spelled now. Mm-hmm. But I never even recollect or remembered any of that when I was mm-hmm. making my rap names yeah. and shit. And then it just come back full circle like, damn, I've been, I've been, Low key putting this in my brain mm-hmm. the whole time, so yeah. it's wild, you know, how shit works out. I don't know. Once again, it comes back to the energy shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking energist. Yeah. So uh, before we get wrapped up, um, you have anything? Uh, you, are you you're working on more uh, projects with Pat now? Yeah, I'm actually. Mm-hmm. We just uh, made the playlist for my um my new EP that's gonna mm-hmm. come out this month. Hopefully, mm-hmm. at the end of the month, it's uh the, it's gonna be like a first volume of all the EPs. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you have a, a release date for it? Because I've got the release date for this episode. I have. What is it? Twenty seventh, my birthday. My, my EP. Nobody is cares, supposed, Daniel. My EP is yeah, supposed right. to drop on uh, my brother's birthday, which is the twenty eighth. Twenty eighth. So that's that. that's pretty dope. Yep. That's that's a that's a perfect setup. Yeah, that's yep. what's up. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. if you're and what what's it called? The it's uh it's gonna be called the Cook Up Volume One because it's just like I'm just doing a bunch of little three to five track EPs mm-hmm. now instead of doing full albums. Mm-hmm. That way. The, uh, the listeners can grab on to less music in a less condensed yeah. time. You know what I mean? Because I don't know. It's a new me, way to put out music. Now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and Pat yeah. were talking about that shit, and you know, it was just um, <clears throat> it was better and easier for the listener wise if they can just have as much, I mean, as least music as possible to put out and fucking listen to instead of putting out like 15, 16 songs at once and none of them get listened yeah, to. Yeah, people li- mm-hmm. put out, I know it's a big thing now, you put out a song maybe every three, four months yeah. and mm-hmm. just when you have it, you put it out. Because yeah. mm-hmm. if you wait three or four years to put out a full length album, nobody's going to listen to the whole thing and yeah. people yeah. might especially, forget about you by the yeah, time you're especially there. Especially in, in West Virginia, in this area. It's yeah. Like, you know, we, we, my band took nine months off right. and released our first single um, last month. Right, about two weeks ago, actually, and you know the we a lot of the fans stuck around for us, but we 
kind of, I mean, obviously we fell right. off. We took nine months of not doing anything. Right. No shows, nothing. So, you know, the consistency is key. Yeah, that's you know, what I was about to say is consistency yeah. is key, especially at our level of engagement mm-hmm. right now. Like, mm-hmm. the more you can put out, the better. Like, as soon as you make a song, if you got the the money or whatever to do it, put that bitch out because, yeah. you know, the like, you fall mm-hmm. off and have less time making music and it's just, you got to start all over mm-hmm. again. Like, I put a mixtape out last year and I just dropped two new singles like a, last month. But before that, I haven't put out music for a whole fucking year. And then, you know what I mean? So now I'm trying to build it back, it back up back again. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. So the more consistency is everything. So, yeah, I got the Cook Up Volume 1 coming at the end of this month. I got a singles out, uh, Finger Roll and Smile on all uh, platforms everywhere. You mm-hmm. can find it anywhere. And then uh, I got visuals and more things coming at mm-hmm. all times, man. I'm trying to keep it locked and loaded. Yeah, and we'll link everything. So if you're listening, everything's in the link below. Link below, hyperlinks. So just click on there. It'll take you right to exactly his yep. music. And you can follow me on uh, mm-hmm. Instagram and Twitter at exactly E X Z A C K L E E one of one w- number one of and then another number one. Mm-hmm. I'm everywhere, man. Follow me and follow me on my quest to success and let's mm-hmm. get it. Yeah, those will also be in the description below. Yes, sir. Too. So, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we get wrapped up? Uh, no, that's about it, man. About I it? just keep on working. Yeah. Hope everybody's blessed, and we going we gonna to get it and be successful. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. We appreciate you, you coming out. Thank you all for your time. Hey, thank yeah. you all for having me, for yeah, sure, no man. Problem. This is dope. Yo, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Cash, 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 cash. Cash, 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 cash. 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 Exactly. I need it. I need the cash in the bags. Yeah. I did this here for my mans. Yeah. I give a fuck about the grams. Yeah. I give a fuck about the gram, yeah. I ain't been posting no picture, yeah. I just been focused on DJ, yeah. I'm gonna multiply figure, yeah. yeah. Finger roll, finger roll, finger roll. I need the cash in the bags. I did this here for my mans. I did. I give a fuck about the grams. I give a fuck about the gram, yeah. I ain't been posting no picture, yeah. I just been focused on DJ, yeah. I'm gonna multiply figure, yeah. Finger roll, finger roll, finger roll. I need it easy as finger rolls Pocket looking like some jelly rolls Sit figures all in the envelope Eating as good as a cantaloupe Why are they lying to antelope? Why are they lying to squares? They never in the loop Facts Yeah, yeah I need me two coops Pound rolled up next to Snoop R.P. Lil Snoop Dreams of nightmares bumping out the sunroof Big dog, no need for a wolf She know when they see the wolf And I'm back for Wall Street I have been chasing my dreams why they tryna hate me, me, me? How could you hate that? I could be Trump or be Reagan I could be school shooter Ray Jan But I never been programmed, yo yeah. Get with the program Flow is nasty, yes, I'm toe jam Tryna ball hard like a space jam Exactly what they need, they know who I am, yeah I need the cash in the bags I, need I did this here for my mind I, did. I give a fuck about the grams I give a fuck about the gram, yo I ain't been posting no picture, yo I just been focused on DJ, yo I'm gon' multiply figure, yo Finger roll, finger roll, finger roll I need the cash in the bags I did this here for my mind I did it I give a fuck about the grams I give a fuck about the gram, yo I ain't been posting no picture, yo I just been focused on DJ, yo I'm gon' multiply figure, yo Finger roll, finger roll, finger roll I just been focused on digits, counting these tickets, I see no limits Master P with the vision, haters gon' hate, they not my division Not in my bracket, I'm causing racket, good with no practice My flow electric, no you see static, you don't want static Yeah, 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 hey, I feel like I am the prodigy God told me every verse I spit is prophecy Do they got problems with me, I say probably I don't know why I'm just growing my money trees Probably cause they money low and they bitches is ugly Luckily, I give a fuck about that fuckery, fuck with me My shit gon' blow like a car, they be all over everything Music my medicine, my flow is heaven's and hello I represent still by the president Yeah, yeah, move like an Immigrant, my flow is ignorant, nasty is licorice Feeling magnificent, need a bag, get it quick Fat boy, I need a flesh, just me, I kill the rest Rest in peace, put the bad pieces still in my head Jesus, will catch money, bags, bags over everything Bags over everything I need the cash in the bags I did this here for my minds I give a fuck about the grams I give a fuck about the gram, yo I ain't been posting no picture, yo I just been focused on DJ, yo I'm gonna multiply figure, yo Finger roll, finger roll, finger roll I need the cash in the bags I did this here for my minds I give a fuck about the grams. I give a fuck about the gram, yo. I ain't been posting no picture, yo. I just been focused on DJ, yo. I'm gonna multiply figure, yo. Finger roll, finger roll, finger roll.